All right, so what we're going to do is set up this laboratory, which is an osmosis lab. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is looking at how water moves across a membrane and how the concentration of some solute, in this particular case, it's just going to be sugar, right? So it's sucrose, which is just table sugar, right? So if you have just little packets of sugar or you have a big giant bag of sugar, um, that's all you need. It's nothing uh, particularly special, but you're going to use uh, this sugar and you're going to be measuring it out in your measuring cups like this. So you may have these cups or you may have these cups. Um, these are a little more difficult to read. So what I recommend you doing is finding a place with good lighting where you can actually read the markings on them and then taking a Sharpie and then kind of highlighting them. So it's easier when you're actually um, setting things up to see what you're actually measuring uh, with these little cups, okay? So in the experiment, there's uh, several things you have to do. The first thing you have to do is make up a bunch of solutions. So that's what I recommend you doing first. So you're gonna uh, be using this sheet as a reference and then there's a specific set of detailed protocols and instructions uh, online with your lab. So you're gonna make three sugar solutions and then the other one is just for, for plain water, but we're gonna be sort of treating them all the same way. So the first thing you're gonna do is set up the water. So again, I recommend just getting uh, some spring water. So for, since you're using water in so many different experiments in the class, just getting a big jug of it would be ideal, probably the cheapest uh, thing to do. Uh, and then using that same water in all the different experiments. In this particular one, what we're gonna do is have these um, containers. You will have a bunch of these graduated tubes uh, in your kit. You're going to add water up to the 40 milliliter mark. So I'm just gonna be something exciting to see here. I'm just pouring the water in and making sure that it's 40. Try to, if you look at eye level, you get the most accurate reading. Uh, so do that, I'm adding this in here in two, three. and four. Okay. Now, I'm going to recommend you also label these because once you get going, um, you're going to have to use the test tube rack for setting up your experiment and you're going to have to take the tubes out of the rack and put them someplace else. So when you do that, you might forget which one is which. So this one is the one that's just going to be water. So this one is pure H2O. So I'm just labeling it H2O. These others are gonna be getting sugar. So uh, this one's gonna be the one molar. So I'm putting just one M. One's gonna be 0.5 molar. So I'm writing 0 0.5 M. And then one is uh, 0 0.25 molar. All right, so those are the molar concentrations of the solutions you're gonna be making. I already kind of weighed out how much and then compare that to how much volume they take up in these little tubes. So this is the amount of sugar. It's in the little weigh boat, comes up to the 15 milliliter mark. If you add that to the 40 milliliters of, 40 milliliters of water, it will give you a one molar solution or something very, very close to the one molar solution. So I'm gonna do that and add my sugar here. Cap it. It's already been labeled. So it's a good idea to pre-label this way. You know what you're doing, you're adding it to the correct container. Mix it, then let it sit. You'll probably have to mix it again. The one molar is very concentrated. So now the next one, it says uh, 7.5 mils. So let's see, I'll just do that here. Use this cup here. So I see the five, I have the 10 I marked on my little cup. You may be able to see that. You may not be able to see it, but um, as, long, as long as you can see it in person is what matters. I'm gonna add the sugar up to the line that's halfway between the five and the 10, because that would be 0.75. Or sorry, 7.5 would be the five, between five and 10. So make sure it's like halfway between. Okay, so that goes in the tube that's labeled 0.5 molar. Okay, cap that. shake it, come back to this one. You can kind of see there's still sugar on the bottom. Make sure it's very well dissolved. You can't start your experiment until these are completely dissolved. And then the 0.251 uh, only needs 3.75 
mark on this little measuring cup. So I'm gonna get to be underneath the five mark here. Okay, that looks good. I put that in. All right, now I have my four solutions. All right, so in your sheet here, you have the sugar concentration, zero, that's just pure water, 0.25, that's this one, 0.5, that would be the next one, and then the one molar, that's this one. So that's the first part of this experiment. That's getting your solutions made. So what I'm gonna do is now move some of these things to the side, have a little more space. And now you're gonna set up the actual experiment. You're gonna have to repeat this experiment three times. You're gonna do the experiment for the one molar, for the 0.5 molar, and then the 0.25 molar. These are all separate experiments. So you'll do one, time will pass. When it's over, you record your results, dump everything out, clean it, and then set it up again. So you're gonna have a piece of dialysis tubing in your kit. This has to last you for all three experiments. Right? So you don't need the whole thing for one experiment. You're only gonna need a piece of it. So you, you need to cut this into at least three pieces. I recommend um, leaving yourself a little bit extra. So try to cut a square of this dialysis tubing. So essentially look at the width of it here and then cut a length that is roughly equal to the width. Right? So you almost have a little tiny square of tubing. Put that in water. So I have uh, somewhere here. I thought I had the container. There you go behind me. And this water. So you just need a cup of water and you have to have this wet because when it is dry, you can see it's like a crumply piece of plastic. When it's wet, it's a soft little membrane and it's very, very flexible and pliable. So now what you're going to do is get the experiment set up. So we're going to be doing something called a U-tube experiment because the shaped like a U, like the letter U, right? And the idea is we're going to put water, pure water, on one side. And on the other side of the tube, we're going to add in one of the sugar solutions. In between them, see right now, in your kit, you have a little hose barb like this, and you have two little pieces of hose, right? You can right now connect one side to the barb. If it's difficult for you, if you warm this up a little bit, it works better. So you can just put in like warm water and it becomes very, very flexible and you can push it in really well. So if you have trouble, that's what I recommend doing is just uh, dip the end in warm water for a short time and then it'll, it'll go on really easily. So you can put one end in like this, but leave the other end off. What you're now gonna do is get your dialysis tubing. I fish that out of here. It's, now it's very soft and flexible. The thing is, when you do it the way, I, what, where, the way I'm doing this, you're going to have it doubled up. There's actually two layers. Um, and so this is the first time we're doing this uh, in this class. So I'm not sure, honestly, what the best way is to do it. I've done it myself as a uh, little experiment, as a demonstration to check if it works. And it does work. And I've done it this way. It may work better if we do it a different way. So that's why if you have extra tubing at the end, if you want to experiment, freely on your own and set it up in some other way. If you want to like use, like take this, you're gonna find if you, you can open this up and it's actually like a tube, right? Well, I can't quite do the second right now, but you can do it and there's a tube. You can cut it, so just get one thin layer of it and try it with that. You might get very different results. So I haven't yet done that. I probably will when I have more time, but right now I don't. So you're gonna cover the hose barb with it and then take your tube and then sandwich them together. So now what we have is this side is blocked by this piece of tubing. And this side is not blocked all right, by the tubing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to need to now use the rack. So this is why you have to have these labeled because I don't have anywhere to put them now. So I'm just going to put them down on the table so I have space to work. Take your tube, feed it up into your rack, all right, like this. Try to straighten these out as much as you can. The curvature may have a little bit of an impact on this, probably not gonna be too much. So try to make them as 
even as a U like this, as you can, but there is going to be a little bit of curvature to it. Um, that's okay. It's not going to hurt the experiment. The idea here is that you're going to put water on one side. So this is just a pure water. And I would, to make sure you remember which one, is I'm just writing a W on this top of this tube. So that's the water side. And this one, I'm writing an S on it to know that it's the sugar side. I'm gonna take a little pipette that you have in your kit, and I'm gonna start adding water to this side. About an inch, so two centimeters or so from the top, do that. Put that down, or I can just put it over here. Actually, I'm gonna get the one mil one, so I'm gonna grab it. So now the one mil, or sorry, not one mil, one molar one. It's not still not 100% dissolved, but you can see now it is almost completely dissolved. Give it, let it go a second. All right, so there's no more crystallized sugar in there. It's all been completely dissolved in the water. The water is polar, the sugar is polar. They will interact with one another, forming hydrogen bonds, and then eventually become a solution. So now you can take this concentration of solution, this one molar solution, and put it into the sugar side. You want to bring it up to the exact same height, about an inch from the top. So I'm going to take up the water, start feeding it in. Having it be, like I said, the exact height is actually, you want it to be close. Um, but the thing is, you now what you have to do is use a Sharpie. So you, do, you have to have a marker for this. If you don't have a marker, then you need to find some other way to label the water line. So maybe with a piece of tape, something else that you can use, but you have to label it. Right now, what you need to do is draw a line around the tube where the water level is on both sides. Okay, so now I can see exactly where it is. And now you're gonna wait for six hours. Okay, and in six hours, you're gonna then get your little ruler. This one's still wrapped up. You're gonna get your ruler and you're gonna measure <clears throat> if it's changed, if it's gone up or down. And if it's gone up or down, you'll measure that. So for the water side, did it go up or down? For the sugar side, did it go up or down? And then you'll label that. So either up, up will be a plus, minus would be a, put a negative. You don't say for down. Use uh, centimeters uh, or millimeters, really, for the measurement that you're using. Then you're going to repeat it again after 24 hours. So at six hours, you'll mark it. At 24 hours, you'll mark it, and then that's it, and then you're done. Okay, so then after 24 hours pass, you'll be able to dump this. If you go to just pull this out, you're probably going to spill. So I recommend taking the whole test tube rack over to a sink and then just kind of dumping it into the sink. You're gonna take the whole thing apart. Sorry, so I'll, I'll, here, I'll do it here. <clears throat> so I don't have to go to the sink. So let's say 24 hours have passed. I took my two measurements at my one molar one. I have, I have the data I need. So I'm gonna now take this, dump it out, get all the liquid from both sides when my experiment is over. Now you can take this from the rack. You'll be disassembling it and rinsing it. So because of the sugar, is gonna be on really both sides. Discard this bit of the dialysis tubing. <clears throat> Rinse out your tubes. So you could just take it to the sink and kind of rent, go water through them since I'm just sitting here. I don't have a sink, so I'm gonna just do this. <clears throat> and now you're ready to set up the experiment. Again, because you have to do this three, like I said three times. So now you would go to the 0.5. I'm not gonna do it all three times, but I'm just gonna go through it one more time here just to show you you're gonna have to like reset it up again. So same thing can happen here. Take uh, one side of the tubing, put your barbed connector in it, your dialysis tubing, cut off a little square, make sure you get it wet, find your point five molar solution. Make sure it's dissolved. It should be because it's been a full day now since you've made this. 
when you're coming back to it 24 hours later. Now you take your little piece of tubing, which is flexible. It doesn't take very long. It only took less than a minute uh, to really uh, absorb some water and become flexible. Get my tubing here, sandwich it back on again. Put those together, set it into your test tube rack. That's it, and now you're gonna repeat it. So now what you're gonna do is find your pure water, pure H2O, get your pipette, put the water on the water side, bring it up to the line, get your 0.5 molar solution, pipette that on the sugar side, bring it up to the line, same thing, six hours, record the change in height, 24 hours, record the change in height. And that's it. And then you'll clean this out and then repeat it a third time with the um, 0.25 molar, uh, the lowest sugar concentration, and you'll have that one. So this experiment actually takes three days to complete. So you can't let it go to just the last minute. You're gonna have to do this kind of early on. It goes with the content in your course that's early on in the, in the course. It ties into membranes um, and diffusion and osmosis. So if you, you're doing it around that point in time, it'll help because it'll help you learn a little bit about the process. You'll be observing this process uh, and you'll be collecting some data um, that you can use to finish up your, your worksheet and turn it in. You're gonna have specific things. You're gonna have to show the setup, taking photographs of it, when you first set it up, you're gonna to have to take photographs of it after the 24 hours um, where they are at different heights, hopefully. Um, and you're gonna to have to do that for each of the concentrations. Um, you can just have one for the setup, but you have three different results at 24 hours. So you have one for each of those uh, end periods. So uh, 24 hours for the one molar, 24 hours for the 0.5 molar, 24 hours for the 0.25 molar, you need a photograph you know, of each of those. So three foot to submit with your lab work um, so that we see see the results, uh, see that you actually did the experiment. And that should be it. So um, most everything you need is in the kit except water and the sugar uh, and a Sharpie. So you're going to have to provide those things yourselves, but otherwise you should be set and ready to do the osmosis lab.